The anger apocalypse is definitely upon us. Are you infected? Anger is around us everywhere. Everyone, even your grandmother, has something that they're angry about right now. Whew. So before we dig into that, let's have a cup of tea. I'm gonna pour some green tea out of my favorite teapot. Hopefully not spill it. Put it in my favorite mug because this is going to be kind of an intense topic, but I'm very excited, very excited to talk to you about this because this has been something that's been on my heart for a while. And we need to fortify each other as friends because we need to be there for each other no matter what life brings us. So, excuse me for a moment. Mm. And I highly, highly recommend pick up a tea practice. It doesn't have to be anything fancy or ceremonial or anything like that. Just drink some tea and take some time for yourself. It will help get over the anger that might be welling up in your soul at this point in the history of the world. So I don't have to tell you that a lot of things have been happening lately. And uh, we don't really have to go into it because everyone is painfully aware of at least the major headlines. The world has always been a mess. There's been wars and disasters and, and sicknesses like the Spanish flu even in the 1900s. Ah, there's been a lot of stuff that the world has gone through, both locally and globally. Honestly, worse than what we're going through. And we gotta keep that into perspective. But we're not going to disqualify the way that we feel because it is real. And we are just humans making our way through yet another thing. What makes it worse and what makes it feel more exaggerated is that we're so connected. And we're connected to sometimes not even real people. Sometimes they're actual robots created for division and fear. So be careful when you're on the internet. Remember, it is not a real place. <laughs> I mean, some things might be real on the internet, but it's very hard to figure out what's real and what's not. In the meantime, your anger is triggered. and. It is okay to be angry because a lot of this stuff is wrong. So in a way, your anger is sort of righteous, but is it healthy? No, it's not, it really isn't. To operate from a place of anger is weak, actually. It weakens your whole system. You're not thinking from your more reasonable, nuanced brain. If you find yourself welling up with anger and getting all those emotions. Don't be guilty about it, but understand that you're working from the emotional side of your brain. That's motivation not to let anger overtake us. But how do we do that? Here's a secret that science has taught me recently. Every emotion lasts about 90 seconds in the body and the brain. And if you can get past that emotion without getting on a track, of reliving it and then connecting it to thoughts in your brain and just roller coasting and cycling through that thinking pattern, you can let it go. And then you can think more thoughtfully about something rather than emotionally. We need both, we need that balance. Totally okay to have emotions, please do. Facts aren't feelings, but feelings are certainly a, an indication of something. But here's the deal. This is how we manage and this is how we make sure that we don't get infected by the disease of anger that is ravishing us more than even the other disease that I won't mention because YouTube will flag this video, Shh, but you know what I'm talking about. You need to first deal with your body and, and let your body relax and you need to not feed it. A lot of this information, treat it like junk food. It's not good for you. It's good to spread information, but we, we're kind of full with it kind of been gorging ourselves on a lot of information. Even if it's healthy news that we should kind of generally know about, it's like eating too much healthy food. Too much food is also not good for you if you're not gonna do anything with it. So that's one thing. Don't consume everything, you know? You're actually training your body to have adrenaline responses and anger is a form of like, an, there's a lot of chemicals going on, but a chemical response and you can actually get a bit addicted to that. So you, this is why you just gotta be careful. You just gotta sit down, 
take a deep breath from the belly. I think I just chest breathed. I'm working on it, but deep breath from the belly and relax. Make yourself a cup of tea, even if it's for five minutes, just sit there and don't think about anything. Don't do anything, just breathe. We're used to having a, an illusion of control. A lot of people go to their nine to five job, they come home, they have their house pretty much in order. Sure, they might have bills or something like that, but they're pretty used to the status quo and our status quo has been shaken up. And that's why a lot of people are angry. So my biggest recommendation to you, my friend, because I know that you care and that's why you're feeling anger sometimes, Focus on what you can control. A lot of times we focus on this big picture. Oh, the president's doing this. Oh, the global leader doing this and all of that stuff. And it might be true. It might be just that bad. But you know how you change things? You change things on the local level. If you care about the second amendment and you are mad like I am that it's being abused and that freedom in general, free speech, the second amendment, due process, all that stuff is being abused. Take it from the global and bring it to the local in your life. What can you do locally? Could you bring one new person to the range every year, every 10 years? You know, don't put, don't put a lot of pressure on yourself. Start with action first. You have to have actionable steps. If you come across something in your life and you can't think of an actionable step that you can do other than talk about it to your friends or rant or be angry. A lot of times we feel like we're on the same team if we're angry about the same stuff. But what are we doing about it? You gotta channel that. You can get involved in local politics. You can get involved in local organizations. I don't care if it's mowing someone's lawn. Just spread joy to other people. That is more valuable than you can imagine. If we all did that, can you imagine how powerful everything would be? And it would have a repercussion. If you feel so powerless, remember that you are not powerless. Not at all. You have power. You just have to figure out what your superpower is. Find your strength before you act. If you act in anger, rarely do good things happen. You must calm your spirit first. The anger is a motivating thing. You know you're bothered by something there. It is a messenger, but it is not the message, right? You have to calm yourself for your own sake. And if you only do that, if that's all you do for the world, imagine if we all did that. Imagine how powerful that would be if we all just took a moment, shared some tea with a friend, and just breathe and remember that we have very little control over a lot of things, but we do have control over some things and we can do something. There's some resources in the description, uh, ways you can get involved and communicate more with us. And tell me how you navigate anger and how you navigate difficult emotions. I hope that this has helped you not be infected by the anger apocalypse and just remember, do what you can, where you're at, with what you have. Apocalypse, such a weird word, apocalypse. You got some nice apocalypse, girl. <laughs> okay.